Hello peeps, Average Tea Drinker here and today I'll be guiding you through the Siege of Boralus in Season 1 The War Within, where it actually has had some changes since it last did appear in BFA, but we're going to go over all of it throughout the video. Starting off, instead of the different faction starts like it did before, it's now always going to start you on the Alliance side of the dungeon making it consistent for each run. Now, you were able to jump over the side here and then go across the water, but they've actually fixed that. You can't do that anymore because it's going to teleport you out of the dungeon instead. So you will have to go the normal way, like in the video. Straight into the first trash of the dungeon, you'll be dealing with the Iron Tide Wave Shapers. They do two casts, one being Water Tide Shell, which buffs a mob with a magic effect, which reduces their damage taken by 90%. And then after 10 seconds, it will expire and stun all nearby enemies for 4 seconds. So it's really important to interrupt this cast. Or if it does go off, you have to use a magic purge like Master Spell or just Shaman Purge. Because this buff cannot go off. They also cast Brackish Bolt, so throw some spare interrupts on this as well. The Iron Tide Raider, they have an ability called Iron Hook. And this is going to pull you towards them. Then as soon as they finish doing that, they're going to start casting Savage Tempest, which is an AoE around them. Do not want to be in this, and you do have a good amount of time to get out of it, so as long as you move straight away, you'll be fine. Next are the Black Tar Bombers, which are going to throw targeted Swirly, Burning Tar, so avoid this. They also do a unavoidable damage through Firebomb, so pay attention if you have a few of these casts on you. The Scrimshaw Enforcer is a mob the tanks will be dealing with, which has a targeted frontal at them. So tanks do try to avoid placing the frontals towards the Iron Tide Raiders as they have the Iron Hook ability. And you can get pretty nasty timing alongside being pulled in with the frontal. Lastly, the Scrimshaw Gutter and the Shredder. The Gutter has a targeted tank ability called Toothbreaker, which reduces their haste by 15%. For 10 seconds and then the shredder does a random iron ambush on players so be wary of that damage going out on people if you are already low it also casts stinging steel on the tank which applies a dot so tanks will have to be a full alert with these two and just communicate with your healer whenever you do need help after you fought your way through to the boss you'll be fighting red hook and these two starting adds they will also continue spawning throughout the encounter the Power Shot add does random targeted damage through Molten Slug on players. And then the Cleaver does a frontal called Heavy Slash at the tank. So try to aim this away from your party. The main mechanic is on the hook, which is going to be cast back to back throughout the fight. So you can't actually directly tank this boss as you would normally with other bosses. Instead, it's going to fixate random players and they will have to direct the boss to the bombs located in the room. These spawn in and then they also have a timer, so you'll want to try kite them towards the expiring ones first. If he finishes the cast on the hook, he will then hook in all players and follow up with Gore Crash, which deals heavy AoE damage around him and knocking anyone back. You can stop this cast early by kiting him into the bombs, and then the boss will then take damage and gain a 50% increased damage taken debuff, so try to align your cooldowns for these windows. If a bomb is about to expire as well and you can't get the boss over there, just get a tank or a player with a strong defensive to soak them, otherwise it will go on the whole party if they do explode, or tanks can kite the cleaver adds into them. After each recovery after he's stunned, he's going to cast iron hook on a random player, so be ready to move out again before he fixes another target. After you defeat Red Hook, you're going to now be dealing with a couple of new trash mobs. The first being the Iron Tide Curse Blade. It uses a Curse Slash on the tank, which increases their damage taken. So use any Curse spells you have to help out. I think I may have just said Curse about 500 times. Moving on though, you'll have the Commanders, which cast Bolstering Shout, which buffs their allies, reducing their damage taken by 75%. So definitely kick this or dispel these buffs if it goes off just do that via purging the commander also does a target charge on a player so place this outside of the group as it's going to do aoe around you in an area so you don't want to be stacked with your group you'll also be dealing with the wave shaper you fought earlier in the dungeon as well so right here there's an event where the power shot artillery along with the spotter are going to shoot down this corridor 
then they're going to reload and then they're going to shoot again so you will want to be LOSing when they are shooting and when they're reloading you can move further up. There is some techie stuff you can do you can just have your tank if they have a way of jumping or leaping to this pack just instantly getting in combat with them because it'll stop the event. For myself as a shaman I can just put my earthbind totem on top of them and then that'll stop the event and I'm sure there's many other ways but if you know, check your class discords, they might have some techniques for you there. Also in this pack, you'll have the Ashvein Spotter, as I mentioned, which is going to target a member of your party with sighted artillery, which is going to drop bombs on the location you are standing in. You can stack two of these in the same spot before you need to move. This used to deal damage to the enemies, but now it doesn't. So try to keep the spread of these zones to a minimum just to help your party so they don't have to move out. And then when the spotter gets low, he's going to attempt to flee. So use any roots and snares just before to finish it off. And hopefully he won't pull another pack for you. Lastly, before the dread captain in the boss room, you'll have the cannoneer here, which is going to do a massive frontal on the tank. So make sure you point this away from your party. Now for the dread captain. Tanks will want to be within melee range at all times, otherwise the boss is going to continuously cast gut shot on players, which is a heavy dart, and if it does end up going on you, definitely pop a defensive. It is a bleed as well, so you can actually bleed cleanse it. The boss will cast invasive if she isn't slowed, root, or snared, so always have some form of those CC on her, otherwise she'll leap back and then she'll start gut shotting everyone. There is a tank targeted frontal called clear the deck, so Try to have this pointed away from your group as space can be limited on this fight and if you are not the tank just always be paying attention to where the boss is faced. One thing to note with this ability as well it does actually seem quite bigger than it is so definitely try not to stack close to the boss. Try always be a bit away have a bit of space between you and the boss just so you don't get accidentally cleaved. Fiery Ricochet is a dot which bounces from different players, so healers will have to use CDs for this because it hits really hard. Throughout the fight as well, the boss is going to cast mass bombardments throughout the area, which is the same as the spot bombardment, but it goes on every single player now, so you kind of want to stack these as a group, and you can still do the two bombardment stacking trick just to maximize uptime. Lastly, at 66 and 33% health, the boss is going to yeet onto her ship, that's when the intermission phase begins. She's going to fire the swirlies on the floor. You'll have to dodge. And then three adds are going to come down. Two deckhands, one cannoneer. Two of the deckhands are going to cast a bleed on the tank. And then the cannoneer needs to be focused down. And it's also going to do the frontal it did just like before. Once the cannoneer is dead, he's going to drop his cannon. One of you goes and picks up the cannon. Use your extra action button. Shoot it towards the boss. And then the boss will come back and then you'll just repeat the first phase until you do the intermission phase again and then that's the fight like before there is another event you have to stop regarding the artillery on the hill here just behind the blockade i don't believe you can actually get there before they start shooting so you'll need to hide first and then as soon as they're done you'll have to get in combat with them but you need to be right next to them if you just fire a range spell and don't go close to them, they will actually just continue firing. So make sure you go right up to the blockade. So now a new area and new trash to deal with. First being the big old demolisher, which is going to do an AOE damage with crushing slam. Definitely use defensives when needed for this. They also cast a uninterruptible fear around them. So unless you're playing with a trusty shaman who is good with their tremor totem, I'd make sure to move out from underneath the purple swirly and it also does do damage to you as well if you do stand on it. The buccaneers they're going to cast banana rampage and aoe around them so make sure to stop these casts just so melee have a better time with killing their pack off. Whilst the mob is also casting this they're going to shoot out little bananas all over the place which are going to stun you if you do stand on them so be extra careful not to slip on a banana as you may end up getting stunned whilst the swirly is underneath the demolisher so you always need to have your eyes peeled next is the pillager which is going to occasionally cast stinky vomit so interrupt and stop this cast if it does end up going off it can be disease dispelled another caster is the bilge rat tempest they're going to rotate two casts 
First one being Chokal Mortars, which is definitely the priority kick, as it is a magic debuff on players, which does a lot of damage and it silences them, so pretty nasty for your casters. This can be dispelled as well. And then they're also going to fire out Water Bolts, so just use any spare kicks and CC for these casts. Next are the Cutthroats, which put a nasty disease dart on the tank, which reduces healing by 25%, so really nasty debuff there. Make sure to disease dispel this if you can. Further on up the stairs here, you're going to have the Sniper Pack alongside the Spotter. These deal heavy, heavy damage. If you get targeted by a few of them as well, you have to pop a defensive because a couple of hits from these guys, you will go down. You'll want to use as much CC as you can just to stop too many of the shoot casts going off. Last two mobs are the Destroyers, which are going to gain a Furiosity buff, which can be soothed. And then you have the invaders which will occasionally gain the stinging venom buff so tanks you're going to want to be wary of this if you have any poison spells in your group definitely use them on the tank to help out now that you've dealt with all the trash in this little area here you're going to be doing two bosses back to back first one you'll be dealing with Hidal, who is very similar to the bfa version breakwater which cast throughout the fight puts swirlies underneath each player besides the tank it will then explode and leave a puddle on the floor so be aware of where you're positioning these pools and i'd always advise to stack them up together if you can and i'd recommend to use defensives on these cast too because it's definitely the hardest hitting ability the boss will also cast a tank funnel called crashing tide which does a line of these puddles so try to aim these towards the edges of the room away from your group once the boss reaches 100 energy he's going to cast tidal surge now two waves are going to spawn in different directions you want to hide from the first wave on the opposite side of the fountain this is why you want to play the puddles and have positioned away from the middle just to make it easier for you to rotate around the fountain for the first and second wave once the first wave passes you want to have a look around the room just to see where the second is coming from and then again just dodge on the opposite side of the fountain you can get an overlap of the tank frontal whilst you're behind the fountain so use move speed if this does actually end up being the case because the timing can be quite close with you being hit whilst you're still behind the fountain quick note if you stand too close to the edges of the room and the boss has tidal surge you may end up unfortunately getting the wave spawn on top of you so just be wary as if that does happen it will instantly kill you once the gate RP is done, you're going to press W and dodge the swirlies as you run down the hill to the last boss. The final boss here is a platform fight where you'll rotate around each area until you get to the ship, which is the final place. You'll be dealing with two types of tentacles in each area. First one being the demolisher and then the gripping, which will free the NPC to fix the cannon, which will then shoot at the boss and you'll progress to the next platform where you will repeat this again two more times. The Demolishing Terror needs to have the tank in melee range at all times, otherwise it's going to cast Hull Cracker, which deals heavy AoE damage when no one is in range. It will also cast Slam, which now doesn't knock back players on the weekly reset, they just changed this, but instead it ignores armor. You'll still want to use defensives for this slam cast as well because it hits pretty hard. The boss is also going to cast putrid waters on two players which can be magic dispelled. If this does go on you make sure not to have other players around your circle because if you do end up getting dispelled they will be absolutely yeeted very far away. If you only have one magic dispel in your group the last player with the debuff needs to also use a defensive alongside this because it does tick pretty hard and it can overlap with the AoE slam from the Demolisher. In each platform, the boss will cast Call of the Deep, which sends swirlies, so always pay attention to those. Quick note, if you're the person who is going to hit the boss with the cannon, make sure you exit it as fast as you can because the boss will then destroy the cannon alongside anyone in it. And one last thing, if you're running to a platform, make sure that your tank is getting there first because if you go onto the area, you will trigger the tentacles and if you don't have the tank in range of the demolisher you're just going to have the demolisher spam cast hole cracker and you will wipe thanks for watching this dungeon guide and hopefully this will help get you towards your ksm achievement if you haven't already 
If you did enjoy the video, click on the like button. As always, it really does help your boy. If you want to catch me live, head over to my Twitch. I will link it below. And if you do like the UI, as I always say, just head over to the Discord. It is free. Special thanks as always to all of you. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. Catch you all next time.